The word stretch in informal connotation is defined by Oxford as to quote, adapt or extend the scope of something in a way that exceeds a reasonable or acceptable limit. If you need a racing example of this, it's a pretty big stretch calling Oliver Askew an IndyCar bust. Now, I'll be upfront and say that Askew's first and only full-time IndyCar season wasn't a bed of roses. He got smoked by his teammate, got a concussion, and then lost his drive. That's a bad year no matter how you look at it. But calling him a bust would only work if he didn't show any promise behind the wheel of an IndyCar. And that's simply not the case. Drivers like Marty Roth, John Erb, and Mark Taylor are considered busts because they showed nothing in an IndyCar. Even a guy like Sebastian Saavedra can't be labeled a complete bust, because at least he got one pole position, that coming at the Indy Road Course race in 2014. I've had my fair share of criticism against Saavedra in the past, but he can't deny that at times he showed at least something. But when it comes to Askew, he showed far more than Saavedra ever did in far less time. At times in his career, he showed that given the time to flourish, Askew could do a good job in the series. He finished on the podium in Iowa in 2020, getting a career best finish of third. And in my opinion, he would have likely gotten even more decent results had the Indy crash not happened. You can see the immediate hit in his performance after the race. In the following four races, Askew finished no better than 14th. And even after taking two races off and returning in St. Pete, he was still off. Then after he was unceremoniously kicked to the curb after just one year, an exact reason was never given. But there's a pretty clear reason why this change happened. Felix Rosenquist had won earlier that year in Road America, and he was a hot commodity at the time. Rosenquist was and still is a decent driver, so the decision to drop Askew was fairly cut and dry. But let's say that doesn't happen, and Askew actually stays with the team. Now, 2021 was a pretty miserable year for that number 7 car, compounding with a stuck throttle and subsequent crash that took Felix out of the car for two races. But I don't think he would have had as bad of a year as Rosenquist did. And this isn't me giving the short end of the stick to Felix either. I've been rooting for the guy since his Formula E days back in 2017, but it's fair to say that in his second year with the team, Askew wouldn't have had to deal with the growing pains. But I can't defend this guy off of entirely speculation and what-ifs, so let's lay out some stats and pick a couple moments which prove above all else that calling Askew a bust is extremely disingenuous. 2020 race 1 in Iowa, for instance, where he wasn't very far off his teammate and brought the car home in third after having to pit one more time than the two cars ahead of him. He also led 10 laps in race 2, finishing ahead of Pato. Then in 2021, he had some solid moments as a part-time driver. When he deputized for Renus VK at Road America, he was faster than Connor Connor Daly in qualifying, beating his time by about a tenth of a second. However, thanks to the group qualifying format, he would start alongside him on the 8th row. In the race proper, he would finish a respectable 12th which is a pretty good performance considering that Ed Carpenter Racing is pretty much stuck in the midfield. The final moment I'd like to show off is Askew's last top 10, this coming in the penultimate race of the 2021 season in Laguna Seca. Driving for Ray Hall in the number 45 car's infancy, Askew qualified for the race in 5th. The only drivers ahead of him in qualifying were Alex Pillow, Will Power, Alex Rossi, and Colin Herta, all of which are championship caliber drivers. He may have brought it home in a somewhat flat 9th, but it was still a great weekend for him. That wasn't a fluke either, as he showed solid speed in Portland, qualifying 9th. So to round this video off, Askew did show at least a little bit of promise in IndyCar. It might have been the equivalent of a strip tease, but he can't deny it. Were his performances in IndyCar streaky? Yes, definitely. There's no point denying that because his race results were quite inconsistent. But that inconsistency didn't define his IndyCar career either. And I can't leave this off without mentioning the concussion, which derailed his 2022 season and his racing career as a whole. Askew wasn't the first driver whose career was thrown into disrepute because of an injury, and he won't won't be the last. The person who made this IndyCar bus video, who I won't mention in a vain attempt to avoid drama, has covered a similar driver in the past, this being Steve Park. They called him a NASCAR bus many years ago, which was a claim met with instant ridicule, the same that you'll find in the comments section of the video he posted this weekend. They eventually rescinded their comments and made a follow-up video, but still. I'm not good at predicting the future, but I'm fairly confident this will end in similar fashion, because that IndyCar bus video on Oliver Askew was ill-advised to put lightly. Would Oliver Askew have ever become an IndyCar champion? Probably not, but is he an IndyCar bust either? Hell no. Thank you for watching, and have a great afternoon.